All right, so we have a, a, a list of widgets uh, that are being hosted by this controller, and we want to access it from outside. So let's restart our server. Uh, we'll start off with, um, with perhaps the hitting this easy one, right, of retrieving all the widgets. So to do that, we'll just go to a browser, right, and we'll just say, uh, I know that our server is running at 8080. I know our URL is API uh, widgets. And indeed, we're getting the, the four or five widgets that we added there, right? It's the array that we were expecting. You know, widgets one through four of the different types. The IDs are all unique. So it's, ex it's exactly what we're expecting, right? And, and this is probably as far as we can go. Actually, no, we, have, we can test one more. Uh, we can test the, uh, this one over here. Uh, so we tested uh, find all widgets. We can also test this one, right, that ends with the ID of the widget that we want. Uh, so let's try that out. So widgets slash one, two, three didn't work. What? I'm sorry? Did I type something wrong? Widget ID. Ooh, thank you. I hate computers. Thank you. Yeah, computers take everything so little. They always do exactly what they're told. <laughs> so let's try it out again. All right, there we go. So we are able to retrieve that one widget, or this one, or that one, you know, each one individually, or all of them at once. Yes? All right, so this is as far as we can test it with a plain browser. It, we need to be able to test all the other ones, right? being able to you know, post a new widget or um, you know, update a widget or delete a widget. So let's try it out. We, did, we never implemented update. We never implemented delete. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, let's try it out, this, uh, this create widget. How's that? Let's do that. So to do that, uh, we, we need to use a tool such as Postman. Postman will allow us to, uh, to interact with this. without a, We don't have a UI right, to interact with this. So uh, the best next thing is to have, use uh, Postman. Right, so I'm going to create a new collection here, and this will be um, CS, uh, this will be web dev, web dev, uh, summer, uh, summer 1, 2019. So in there, I guess we can turn everything off, close all these. Close, 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 uh, don't save. All right, so in, in our new web dev, I'm going to star it so it's at the top. There we go. We're going to create a couple of post, put, delete. Right? We already tested the get. Actually, let's try the get. See if that, let's see if that works. All right, we'll, we'll implement um, find all widgets. So I'll call this. Uh, it's going to be mapped to I have the URL here. I can grab that, copy that, and just put it in Postman. Okay. And I can just say send, and there it is. So the data is coming back. Excellent. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it into my new collection, into my web dev collection. And uh, the name that I'm going to give it is you know, find all widgets. There we go. So save. There it is, find all widgets. Uh, I can clone it and make another one that's almost identical to it. And uh, but this one I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it find widgets by ID. All right, find widgets by ID. And the difference is that this can take as argument a a number. We can save it, run it, and see that it works. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No. That's that's part exactly. Good question. Uh, so the, notice that uh, some of these look identical to each other, like this one and that one, right? The only way for the server to distinguish them is that one is a post and one is a get, right? It would be erroneous to have two that have both the same method and the same U, uh, URL. When you try, if you run this and you compile it, you'll get an error. It'll say uh, you, um, uh, ambiguous URL mapping, that I cannot distinguish them uh, from one from the other. Yeah, yeah, good question. But yes, uh, the, 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 the convention is to have them all look the same, 
but distinguish them by, by verb, okay? Or that you're providing an ID, an additional ID. Yep. Uh, all right, so we did those. Now how about create or post? So we're going to, we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clone this one, this one right here. I'm going to clone it and it says uh, duplicate. And I'm going to use it to create my, my create widget. So create widget. And I'm going to uh, rename it and say create widget. But instead of being a get, I'm going to make it a post. All right. uh, also, uh, I need to embed the data that I'm going to send. I'm going to, I need to embed it inside of the body. Okay. I'm going to embed it inside of the body. I'm going to say that it's raw and that it has a particular um, uh, encoding. I'm going to encode it as JSON. Yes? So this, this will be um, configuring Postman to send a, the, uh, the, the correct MIME type to the server so that the server knows what you're passing it. Is it just plain text? Is it a JPEG file? Is it a, is it a Word document? What is it? Is it? No, no, no. It's, it's plain text, but you should interpret it as encoded as JSON, right? With curly brackets and square brackets and, and quotations and name value pairs and whatnot. Yes? That's what to expect. So, so that it'll know, right? Java will know to convert those JSON objects into Java objects. Yes? For using request body. All right, excellent. Uh, notice that by doing that, it automatically added in my headers. If I go to my headers, notice that it automatically added content type application JSON. See that? I didn't have to do it, right? Because you know, by the body, by selecting raw JSON application, it automatically adds the correct MIME type. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to use one of these as an example, as a body. So the body needs to look like something like that. So I'm going to go back to my create. Right? It's a post, save, it's not a get, it's a post. And the body looks something like this. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to use an ID that already exists. Uh, the IDs that are taken is one, two, three, blah, 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 four, five, six. I'm not enforcing any, any uniqueness. Right? Uh, usually that's going to be the responsibility of the database right? with an auto increment or a sequence or whatever. Right? We're not there yet. We'll do that next week. But for now, we're going to impose uh, uniqueness you know, by convention. So there it is. I'm going to I'm going to make this five 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 six seven. This is going to be widget number five, and it's going to be a YouTube widget. Right? I'm going to send it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to send, and it didn't work. Oh, it did actually. Yeah, the response is way down here. Notice that I have my old widgets plus I have my new widget, my new YouTube widget in there. See that? I can verify that by going back to the browser. Right? Notice that before I only went up to four, five, six, but if I refresh, notice that now I have five, six, seven. Right? So now from anywhere in the world, if somebody knows the IP address of this machine, they can hit that URL and see that I have five widgets. Right? And forever it'll stay there as long as the server is running. If the server reboots, obviously it'll reset to that on those four first widgets. Make sense? So this is what we mean by maintaining the state on the server. The server is maintaining the state. Right? The server knows that it's a single source of truth of what the actual state of the application is. Right? Redux will only be used as a mechanism to propagating the state on the server, propagating all throughout the containers and throughout the components so that they can re-render. Make sense? And that's what we'll do next.